Hello and welcome to Johor Bahru, the venue for the prestigious Monsoon Cup Malaysia 2016 and the final stage of the World Match Racing Tour. A new venue for this year's event, the race village is conveniently situated in Putri Harbour, nestled amongst a thriving commercial hub of shops, restaurants and hotels. This year sees 12 of the world's top-ranked match racers preparing for battle in a bid to lift the Monsoon Cup trophy and become the ISAF World Match Racing Tour champion. After 17 world-class events, the overall ISAF World Match Racing Tour standings at the start of the Monsoon Cup 2016 in Johor, Malaysia, sees Ian Williams of GAC Pindar at the top of the leaderboard on 90 points, closely followed by Bjorn Hansen of Nortiska Racing on 88 points, and Taylor Canfield in third place on 85 points, with Keith Swinton's Black Swan Racing and Phil Robertson's Walker Racing in hot pursuit. The Monsoon Cup has long been considered the crown jewel of the World Match Racing Tour, as well as one of the most formidable competitions on the calendar. Now in its 11th year, the Monsoon Cup has been lifted by some of sailing's most notorious names, with Peter Gilmore, Peter Homburg and Ben Ainsley all taking wins here during the last decade. Not to mention Ian Williams, who will this year be looking to raise the Tunku Laksamana Johor Trophy for a record fourth time. Also vying to be amongst the distinguished names inscribed on the prestigious trophy are Taylor Canfield and Bjorn Hansen. These top three teams have brought us some of this season's most dramatic matches and any one of them could take this year's top spot on the podium. What oh, advantage Canfield as he slides across the stand of Williams. But it is Taylor Canfield ultimately that wins that match. Definitely excited to be back, uh, you know, here with US One for the for the final event of the World Match Racing Tour. We got a couple wild cards uh, World Tour events this year, and uh, we were just hoping to, you know, have a good time and continue match racing here and there, and and we're right in the hunt. So, you know, coming into this event, uh, not not leading the pack, but but right in there. So. We're just going to fight hard right till the end. Williams trying to keep clear, but what will the umpires make of it? Williams bringing the bow down again. We've been here nine or ten times. It'd just be amazing, of course, to get a sixth World Match Racing Tour title. You definitely get that sense when you arrive in Johor and uh, you know it's on. There, Bjorn Hansen, we can see, I'm sure, flags ablaze. There's the flag. What will the umpires decide? Piling down box, towards the, the finish line and it's a green flag. It's uh, fantastic to be back at the Monsoon Cup again. It looks like this is a little bit uh, better venue actually. The condition seems to be pretty good. Of course, Taylor and Ian is among the favorites here. They always do strong results. I think that racing them is going to be tough as always. The start of qualifying saw mixed conditions and the first boat-to-boat -boat contact of the competition as Ruben Corbett's Corbett Racing took on Keith Swinton's Black Swan Racing. After a closely fought pre-start, Corbett squeezed inside at the pin end of the start line, but underestimated the length of his boat, crashing into the Australian stern and conceding a penalty, which later cost him the match. The early qualifying matches also saw some great action, and a surprising win from local hero Haswan Dermawan of Haswan Racing Team, as he took on world number four Keith Swinton of Black Swan Racing. Haswan coming round under pressure. Can he hold on to this lead on the final run? Spinnaker is in the water. So starting to trawl on board Haswan's boat, going for the hoist. And here comes Swinton into the set. Will he catch up? Now come on, Haswan, get that Spinnaker up. Let's see it. Swinton now seeing his Spinnaker collapse as the sails of Haswan take the win. Now Haswan has to roll all the way across Swinton here. Has to get into the lead from here. Coming back from behind. Swinton now picking up the ebb. Can Haswan roll down? onto a good downwind course. He's got to be able to get the jibe in. Here goes Haswan. We'll see Swinton jibe on top. Both boats coming through. Swinton's trying for the roll, but I think Haswan doing the right thing, just sailing his race down to the bottom of the course. We can see there's the finish line, and it is the Malaysian team sailing boat five here in Johor, Malaysia, coming down in this first flight. And he is going to take the scalp of Swinton. It was 2006 when a Malaysian skipper last won a match at the Monsoon Cup, so taking not one but two wins was a huge occasion for both Haswan and his fellow countrymen. 
During the final day of qualifying, the Monsoon Cup more than lived up to its name, with wet and wild conditions playing havoc with the course layout. We join Ian Williams of GAC Pindar and Taylor Camfield's US1, as Williams pushes to knock Camfield off his perch and put a mark on his so far unblemished streak of wins during qualifying this week. Do you think it's raining? It is pouring. <laughs> It is war out there. Taylor Canfield and Ian Williams. This will be the match of the day. It is world rank number one against number three. They both won the Monsoon Cup. They both won the World Championships. They have both sailed plenty of matches against each other. I mean, this is where bragging rights will be won and lost. Huge psychological pressure. This is about as loaded a gun as there is possible to be. It is very close, and now it is Williams that's on the hunt, on the prowl, on the stern of Canfield, as they circle again back up towards the line for death or glory. Williams and Canfield fight. See Chris Main on the bow, GAC Pindar calling the swing, and Williams up with the turn, and Canfield very quick to respond as Williams hooks back below him. There's the one-minute gun. Perhaps 38 seconds back to the pin. Williams the aggressor. Taylor with perhaps 18 seconds to burn. Looking to slow Williams as they sail back. Driving Canfield back towards the pin. Final 35 seconds. Big tack, yeah. Taylor with the tack. Williams tacks underneath. Can he hold Taylor back towards the line? He's in with a luff. Canfield having to bring the bow up. 25 seconds to go. This is for bragging rights as they enter. The final okay. stage of this competition, big down as Canfield crash tax to win okay, the pin. Packing. Ian Williams is going to take the boat, separated to windward, sailing away, 10 seconds on the clock. As Williams comes for a final tack around, Taylor Canfield jiving back onto port, this is going to be critical. Will Canfield be able to cross? Williams on the charge back on port, the gun sound. Williams is on starboard and the bow's coming down, Canfield with a massive down as Williams Backing comes across Backing the bow of Canfield as both boats Simo tack. Williams winning that star, winning the bragging rights. Williams around in the lead. The Delta, what, roughly two and a half, three lengths. Canfield is going to have to luff up and oh. then tack. This is going to hurt. Misjudgment from Canfield and the luff only just making yeah, it around that hugely anybody. costly. I mean, if I was looking for a stage for this match, we have it here. We have the thunder raining down, the rain clouds piling yeah. over the rain, beating down on the surface of the water. This is where champions should be made. It's in this arena, this crucible of fire, thunder yeah, and brimstone. Now Williams squeezes yeah, right, across right. the line and takes first blood over Taylor Canfield, oh, serving yeah, Canfield and crew yeah, their first loss of the regatta so far. The final two flights of qualifying saw Phil Robertson throw everything he had at Taylor Camfield in the closest match of the event so far. With one race in the bag, Robertson went on to race Eric Monin's team sailbox and only just took the win to secure his place in the quarterfinals. The final flight of the round saw the oldest grudge match of the tour, with Ian Williams taking on Bjorn Hansen of Nortiska Racing. Bjorn Hansen having to soak for that mark. Williams is around in first. After sailing through some of the most adverse conditions that Malaysia had to offer, qualifying drew to a close, with eight teams going forward to battle it out for a chance to take the top prize here at the Monsoon Cup in Putri Harbour. Going into the quarterfinals are the top scoring eight teams from qualifying, with Taylor Camfield's US1 in pole position, closely followed by Ian Williams of GAC Pindar and Eric Monin's team sailbox in third place. It's still anyone's race to win. Conceding only two races in qualifying, the 2012 Monsoon Cup winner Taylor Camfield's high score meant they could choose their opponent for the next stage and selected the number eight seed Johnny Burnson of Burnson Sailing Team. Also going through was Argo Group Gold Cup 2014 runner-up Eric Monin of Team Sailbox, who chose Phil Robertson's Waka Racing. After some trademark sailing from the Swede, Bjorn Hansen of Nortiska Racing would be taking on fellow Scandinavian rival and Danish Volvo Ocean racer Nikolai Seierstedt of Treyform Match Racing. This left 2014 World Match Racing Tour champion Ian Williams of GAC Pindar to battle it out against Joachim Aschenbrenner's Aschenbrenner Racing Team. Stay with us as we move into the quarterfinals and one step closer to seeing who will become the new World Match Racing Tour champion.
As we moved into the quarterfinals of the Monsoon Cup, the skippers and their teams prepared to fight for a place in the semi-finals. The early quarterfinal matches got off to a dramatic start when a fumbled spinnaker tackline almost cost Bjorn Hansen the race. Hansen's just lost his tackline. He's going to pull that back on. He's got to make it to that pin. No overlap. Now, no does overlap. he have room? No overlap. Bjorn Hansen saying no. I think no he's going to go for it anyway. No In overlap. comes Sersted no into the mark. No and Bjorn Hansen comes barreling no down to close the door. Sersted bringing the bow up as Bjorn Hansen comes down through the line. It's a wide flag but it's green by the umpires. The drama was high and the penalty flags were flying as elsewhere on the course, Phil Robertson of Walker Racing and Eric Monin's team Sailbox were locked in a close quarters duel. Oh, Big luff from Monin and they've crashed. Phil Robertson tacking onto port. We may see this offset and think it's going to be blue. All even Stevens in the final five seconds as we see Mon in tack. And I tell you what, Phil Robertson is below the ley line for the pin. He will not be able to get this tack in. He has to cross if he tacks or go for a massive duck. Eric Monning, bring the bow down. It's going to be a huge style. Monning, bring the bow down. The swing is stunned. Phil Robertson in all sorts of trouble as Monning attacks with a beautiful slam dunk right onto the face of Robertson. Into the finish. First blood in match number two will go to the Swiss team of Eric Monin and crew. In quarterfinal three, Ian Williams of GAC Pindar was being given no easy ride by young gun Joachim Aschenbrenner of Aschenbrenner Racing Team. In a first to two point round and on nil nil, both teams needed to come out of their corner fighting if they were to make it through to the semi-finals. More header on the bow, more left hand shift and it is Williams' race, Hill Luff. Aschenbrenner doesn't take the bait early on. And finally, attack from number six. Number three, Aschenbrenner will follow Williams into the start. No hook, yeah, no First danger. blood goes to Williams off the line. Here, Chris? Yellow mark, yeah? Breeze coming in from a little bit from the right hand side. Aschenbrenner only ducking by a couple of feet. Williams sailing faster and lower as Aschenbrenner starts to bring the bow up. Williams trying to respond. Bit of a love from Aschenbrenner. Williams doing just enough there. Williams tacking up and through. The wind is up. Now loads of pressure on this hoist. Both boats absolutely neck and neck as they round. Ashton Brenner right on his stern. Williams down and around the mark. Up goes the spinnaker. Both boats full octane, full action hoist. Spinnaker's up. Williams the first to draw. Ashton Brenner setting the spinnaker but almost broaching there. He's Spinnaker's flogging, Williams is powering away. Ashen Brenner a little bit out of control, selling a hotter yeah. angle. And Williams extending a key leg. But Ashen Brenner is high and fast. One flat from Williams Spinnaker, and Ashen Brenner is suddenly crossing past. We can see Ashen Brenner on the plane, high and fast. He's been here before, he knows how to plane, and Ashen Brenner is smoking past the five time world champion. Williams. Not popping onto the breeze, not reading the wind speed and direction. Ashton Brenner straight high and fast and planing past. And the finish line in sight. Can Joachim Ashton Brenner convert? Can he make this stick? Can he stay ahead of world rank number one? Both boats are going to go bow down into the finish. They're both squaring. Ian Williams goes down. Ashton Brenner has done it. <laughs> Look at that. And have you seen that at the Monsoon Cup before? I tell you no. The quarterfinals also saw Bjorn Hansen of Nortiska Racing be the only skipper to dominate the round with straight wins, sending home Nikolai Seierstedt of Treeform Match Racing. Eric Monin and Phil Robertson took one win apiece, as did Williams and Ashen Brenner, while Taylor Camfield and Johnny Burnson never completed a match. In the end, thunderstorm stalled the racing and the breeze, meaning the results stood as they were, with Taylor Camfield, Ian Williams and Eric Monin joining Bjorn Hansen on countback as the top four in the semi-finals. With Mother Nature halting play and some surprising wins and losses, everything was left to play for as we moved into the semi-finals of the Monsoon Cup. During the pit for the semis, Taylor Camfield chose Eric Monin, leaving Ian Williams to do battle with Bjorn Hansen. Life comes down to a few moments and uh, this is definitely one of them when we have the chance to bring home the World Championship title to Sweden. And, uh, it's a privilege to, to have that chance going into the final day of the Monsoon Cup. We were happy to, to progress through to, to the semi-finals. 
I guess there was a little bit of luck uh, for us, as with everybody, I think, other than maybe Bjorn in that progression. Uh, but here we are, we're in the semis, and, and we're looking forward to a, a good matchup with Bjorn Hansen. Yeah, so semi-finals here at the Monsoon Cup. Uh, we chose to race Eric Monin in the semi-finals. And yeah, you know, we've, we've had some good matches against Monin before, won some and, and lost some as well. So uh, it should be a good battle. It will be a very interesting um, race against him. Uh, he's sailing for the world uh, title. Uh, for us, it's, uh, we're sailing for going into the finals. So we both have a lot to win and lose. Uh, we'll see what happens. The first semi-final pitched Bjorn Hansen's Nortiska Racing against Ian Williams of GAC Pindar and saw the three-time winner of the Monsoon Cup take straight bullets, dashing Hansen's hopes of glory and sending him to the Petit Final in a bid to take third place on the podium. Also looking to avoid elimination to the Petit Final was Taylor Campfield's US1 and Eric Monin's Team Sailbox. With US1 taking the first win of a first to three point match, Eric Monin's team sailbox needed to bounce back in order to stay in the competition. Inside the final 10 seconds, Canfield looking to tack back. Now can Monin lay? He's been below Port Lay line before. This time he needs to make it. Canfield tacking back onto starboard as Monin brings the bow up. He's going to go for a luff. Big luff from Monin. He's tacking onto Port right in front of Taylor Canfield. He tacks back and Canfield comes barreling it on starboard. We're going to see the umpires getting involved here, I think. Eric Monin scooping the penalty points. Eric Monin picking up this left shift. Yes, He's surprise, going to have a lead surprise. battle here. We're on board with Taylor Campbell. There's Monin tucking in on the left side. Dummy tack there for Monin. Canfield doesn't take the bait. In fact, it's a gain to Canfield. We're on board with Canfield, who is just flying around this race course in another class right now. The Delta about five boat lengths, Monin into the set, and it's not a good one. As Canfield heads downwind to the finish to take his second win. Just staying in phase and, and uh, weighing when you need to cover and when you need to play the shift, and uh, I think we did a, a good job in that race balancing the two. Canfield went on to win the third match of the semis, securing his place in the final against old rival Ian Williams of GAC Pindar. Going into the final, the wind was steady and the tension was high, as these two historical titans of the match racing world prepared to go head to head in a campaign to lift the Monsoon Cup and be crowned ISAF World Match Racing Tour champion. 30 seconds to go. Williams is early. Has he got time for a jive? Looking for one last circle. Taylor Canfield completing onto port. He's going to look to try and block it. But Williams is soon to be on starboard. Final 19 seconds. Canfield coming right. through the attack now. Can Two, Williams get the hook? Impressed. That's the danger for Canfield as Williams comes in underneath. Hey, come Final 12 come seconds. On. Williams with the love. Canfield's behind the line. It's going to be close as Williams brings his bow up. Canfield escaping, perhaps getting the better of the star as Williams tags at the boat end. Both boats slingshotting off the line. Ian Williams, I think, having a slight better of the speed across here. Jerry Mitchell just finding... That perfect little bit of finesse. Williams with the tackle hey, already hey. bowed down. Come on, oh, thinking about a duck. That's way too and late. Taylor Canfield going for a last minute tack, and I think that's going to be close. What will the umpires late. make of it? Tacking too close. That's tacking too close. Green flag. Umpires not looking to get involved, but Taylor Canfield bringing the bow down into that tack. Taylor Canfield now completing on support. Williams who brings in another tack. Both coming back together. I think so. You're forward on it. And crossing. Have a cross. You want to cross? Taylor Canfield has got a cross. Canfield Cam has got it. He takes first blood upwind. Now, the difficult decisions. We can see the patches of water there on the drone shot. The tactician's trying to read that code into their mind and plot their route down the run. Canfield, the first to round, going for the hoist. Right, Two jibes in, but he's managed to extend out on this run. US1 sailing and Taylor Canfield heading Albert. around My the right-hand mark. This is Williams' uh, shot. If he's going to try and pounce on Canfield, it has here to happen go. here. Press. Big We're gust on Williams. Here, and Canfield going for the late Press jibe. Williams set fast out of the top mark. Absolutely nothing in it at this point. Bow to bow, neck and yeah. neck, the finish line. No. Too far ahead. It is just nerves of steel that are going to win this race. I launch a jibe. I want a jibe, Chris. I want a jibe. Can I? starting to get faster. Jibing. It's too late. Too late. There we go. Jibing. He's matching, okay? We now can go Williams back if you want. is faster. 
across the Go line of Campfield who jibes to react. I think Williams is going to roll in here, bring the bow up. I think we'll roll in. Mitchell there fanning yeah, the spinnaker, yeah, trying yeah. to throw as much dirty air down onto Canfield yes, as Williams good. rolls coming around up. the front. Taylor big Canfield luck, okay. coming up no, no, for a love, yeah, but he's going to come around. Can, Williams okay. has finally found the, the way past the US1 You're sailing the as they accelerate in a part. Boom. Williams go rolling go down into a jive as Taylor Canfield reacts. And it is Ian Williams and GAC Pindar that are coming down to close this first match out in the final of the Monsoon Cup. In the pre-start of finals match two, both teams battled to win the favoured side of the course. Taylor Camfield needed a win or risk being knocked out of the competition in the next match. Final 10 seconds, Camfield starting off to the right. Williams will be starting down onto the pin, bringing the bow down now to build Camfield a lot faster, um, doing a better job of that Ready? final luff as Camfield tacks. Now, will we see Williams instantaneously tack? Might have to go back here, guys. Williams is going to be in all dip, sorts dip. of brother. He's going for a big dip. Taylor Canfield also bringing the bow down. They are bow to bow. Hey, you can't come down the last time. Swinging transom. Ooh, possible Absol penalty there. Absolutely nip and tuck. It's a yes. yellow flag penalty, Williams. Yellow. Taylor Canfield was on starboard. He brought the bow down. Williams, I think, altering, taking a last minute opportunity. And Canfield came along and shut down that option. The remainder of the match saw disjointed crew work and some bad decisions on the boat trim by US1 widened Williams' lead, giving him time to offset his penalty at the very last second and cross the line to take another win in match two. At first to three points and with Ian Williams leading two matches to nil, Camfield needed a win to avoid handing both trophies to the current world number one for a second year in a row. At this point, the boats are starting to move backwards and the bowmen in front pushing the jibs either side because the rudders don't work down speed. Simon, Williams backing up below Canfield. So Williams going straight back, Canfield coming down to complete onto starboard. And as they accelerate, Canfield just rolling forward on Williams and then into attack. Oh, hey, hey. he's altering. Coming down here. Easy, easy, easy. I think that catching everyone by surprise. No contact. Bill Hardesty <laughs> calling no contact. Bill, come on. Yellow flag, Canfield tried to sell that it wasn't a penalty for him, but it was. Oh, two, one, Taylor one, Canfield's going to start no this contact, match, guys. another penalty. If he comes back from up against the ropes in this one, Come it'll on, be guys. tougher than the odds hey, in any Rocky movies. Hey, hey how's that? Could it be him. another penalty there? Could he offset his penalty to Ian Williams, we or will he get a second one? Yo, he's done it! <laughs> he's given Ian Williams an offsetting penalty, and the game is on. Less than a minute 30 to go to the start. Canfield back on starboard. Come on, avoid! Williams with the lead. Flag, flag. Going for a jibe. Coming Canfield on, on the offensive. And it's another penalty. Take that, Willie. There's a third that, penalty that. in the match. That is the second penalty Time. on Williams. One left outstanding, Almost and late. Canfield yeah, has come here. out swinging in this match. And they are late for the line. Camfield leading back from that right-hand side. Williams is behind. Camfield is in front. Camfield trying to get okay, up mate. to the line. He's tacking. Taylor Camfield with a tack, and it's a quick one. Tacking back, guys, OK? They're right back. Camfield tacking right back. Williams is going to be coming in with a load of speed. Could that have been a mistake from Canfield? Who called that one? It's definitely handed the race and the match to Williams. Massive breeze okay, on at the top yeah, of the I mean, track, hitting both of these now. boats, but have the wheels slightly fallen off, US-1. They are continuing to slip backwards in the race, says Ian Williams rounds out in front. One job. Ian Williams leads Taylor Canfield downwind to the finish, okay. and the team discussing getting rid of the penalty okay, let's turn. let's go, lay line for the pin then. Coming down to the line, Williams bringing his jib up. He's gonna have to complete Two. that penalty turn one, and then cross the line. Canfield is coming up with more speed, but Williams in a huge amount of current barreling down towards the finish. The spinnaker is coming down and Williams beginning to turn up. We can see the line looming. Williams turning up into the wind. Completing the penalty turn as the bow comes up and through and turning down. Williams coming towards the finish. And with that, they have done it. Ian Williams and Team GAC Pindar have won the Monsoon Cup and they are now a world record six time match racing world champion. Fantastic. I, I can't say enough about these guys. I, I feel like I let them down a bit today, but like they said, they needed an opportunity to shine. And 
that they didn't half prove it. You know, fantastic job all of them. And to, to come back from whatever we were, just buried off the line, a penalty down a couple of times and just overtake and sail away like that is, is, is amazing. After a successful 2-0 victory for Bjorn Hansen in the Petit final, he took third place and in front of a whole host of royals and dignitaries at the Monsoon Cup prize-giving ceremony, joined runner-up Taylor Camfield and the new World Match Racing Tour champion Ian Williams. After an incredible week of world-class match racing at the Monsoon Cup in Malaysia, the sights of these top teams are now firmly set on the first event of the new season. Join us in Fremantle, Australia from the 2nd of March in what will be a new era for the World Match Racing Tour.